Hey everybody, Martin here and welcome back to the second part of this World Creator 2022 series. And let's face it, texturing your landscapes was probably the weakest part of the previous version of World Creator. So today, let's have a look at some significant changes that you can look forward to in the new version. One of these icons here in our global biome that we didn't explore last time is this layered plane. And this is where the material editor is hiding. And here we have quite a lot of options on how to approach our texturing. So first off, you start with adding material and this solid color here. And you can, of course, change it. You can also add textures. And here you would add your various image textures, just like you would in Blender, for example. And if you choose uh, Albedo, it will automatically assign the other image textures to the various passes. However, upon trying this, I thought, come on, it's 2022. Surely there must be some more intelligent automated solution. Well, there is. Carefully hidden here under this gradient custom, you have these five sockets of white color. Now you could, for example, bring up some image like this, click this pick option, hold down control and define your own gradient, which admittedly can be quite fun. However, I find it somewhat unreliable and too complicated. Instead, there are these presets that you can choose and beware this menu is a little wonky, jumping all over the place. But let's choose a preset. For example, this Rock 3 collection and this variant. And well, that doesn't do much. But wait, let's add a second layer, this time something green, like this vegetation preset. And now just look down here and from this distribution type menu, choose sediment. Now that's what I'm talking about. This is a great, clever solution for blending variations of colors based on some predefined rules for landscapes. And now, just like we did in the previous part with our filters, it is time to play with these layers. And usually, the more layers you mix in, the more details the result has and the better it looks. Even more than with the filters, I recommend getting some reference images from nature for the sort of environment you want to create and then try to mix together layers of colors based on that. So in my layering, I first started with these rocky colors and at any time you can change the order of these layers by just dragging them around like this. And by the way, if you don't like any of these presets here, you can always click on this import and open up any texture image you like. I have some mega scans textures here and it creates these gradients for you based on that image. So I went in and layered them like this. This one I set up a sediment layer with amount of 0.16 and thickness of 0.07. In the end I switched back to one of the presets instead of the custom gradient that I created and I set it to rocky distribution type with this value of 65. Next there was this vegetation layer with some little bit drier color. And yeah, let's go a bit deeper now. Let's choose this custom distribution type where we can actually set up our own distribution rules for this. It functions the very same way as the distribution rules for the height that we used in the previous part. Only now we'll pick up some other rules. For example, this slope. Click on it and again, you can set some range values here functioning as angles. The left slider is for the horizontals and right one for the verticals. And as you can see, the higher I go with this point here, the more I fill those horizontal areas with greenery. And I ended up with values around 60 here. One thing I also didn't like is this green top of the mountain, but we can easily get rid of that by using a height rule, add it over the slope here and limiting the top value like we did in the previous lesson. Nice. So now let's add one more vegetation layer, this time a slightly darker one. Set it to sediment here with some low values again, like the 0.16 and 0.07 for thickness. This gave me this nice detail on the ground here. Now it is kind of weird that our greenery goes under the sea surface. And I would actually like to focus separately on this area below the waterline. We can easily do that by adding distribution rules to the whole layer. Just scroll all the way down here 
And here again, let's add a height rule that will limit this whole combined layer we just created, cutting it off from below like this. Uh, now let's add a new material over here and push it below our first layer. With it, we can again set it to custom and start layering some new gradients in here. I, for example, sampled this snow texture, why not? And over it, I added a slightly more yellowish sand. That one I set to sediment with the amount of 0.5 and I left thickness to 0.07 again. Then finally, I added this darker rock with distribution type rocky. And I played with the angle and smoothness until I achieved something like this, the lovely bright formations underwater. And of course, at any time you can still change the preset to any other type. At this point, what I really didn't like were the smooth transitions of our first layer that we created with this height rule. So let's add to this rule something new. Uh, I tried whirly noise and really cranked up the strength until it gave me this result. So this rule is wonderful for breaking down the edges of your effects. Simultaneously, it gave me these white spaces all over, but that was actually okay because it gave me an idea for the last layer of detail some brighter parts, expanding on these little areas of bright color. For that, I simply added a new layer without even messing around with the gradient this time, just using this dark orange color. Now by itself, it of course covered the whole terrain. But watch, when I add a distribution rule called flow, it creates these flow paths, uh, areas where water would maybe naturally accumulate and wash away sediment and vegetation, leaving just this bright sand. And I actually wanted the effect to be only slight, so these were the settings that I ended up with. By the way, we can now have a look at some more settings in this environment menu here. For example, you can take down the strength of the atmosphere, bringing the look of the island closer to what we'd see in Blender without the atmospheric fog effect. Also, you can play with this foam along the coast, adjusting its range if you like. And for the water, you can also play with the clarity factor, making it look more or less dense. Now for some environments, for example snowy mountains or desert plains, you could just go and click on this icon, take a screenshot and move from there, improving your result in Photoshop for example. In that case though, don't forget, you can always increase the detail in here, going to one half or one quarter, or even higher if your machine allows. For this sort of environment though, it really needs some trees and more little details. And it's something we'll have a look at in the final part of the series, where we'll be exporting our landscape to Blender and improving it there. So until next time, Martin out.